create the equation of being and substance. Um, so the question is, so the question is, well, does Bergson then, on, on his own, in order for Bergson to succeed, in order for Bergson's account to be credible, he must be, um, his description of the character of duration cannot be smuggling in any kind of unavowed um, conceptual prejudices. Um, and the, the title, the, you know, the French title of Bergson's book is The Immediate Data of Consciousness. It's translated as time and free will. But I mean, it's effort, the immediate data of consciousness are precisely um, what provide the starting point for Bergson's entire project. And his, his basic claim is that these qualities, these, the immediate data of conscious experience, um, have been um, systematically uh, misconstrued misconstrued and travesty by intellection. Um, so what are these qualities? And they're, the qualities of, of experience are the, are the qualities of sensation, and these qualities are intensive differences. This is, um, those of you who are familiar with Bergson will, will be familiar with the kind of, the, the account. Um, intensive differences cannot be measured. So he begins, Bergson begins the book with an attack on the notion of intensive magnitude. He says that intensities have been um, you know, illegitimately um, characterized or correlated with extensive magnitude. And what, what he's really attacking is um, actually a kind of um, psychological naturalism that was trying to explain um, the phenomenon of consciousness in kind of post Darwinian terms, trying to reintegrate consciousness within the kind of the biological domain. Um, and this is, so that the target of, of the opening chapter of Bergson's book are these psychophysicists, including Fechner and various other uh, French and German um, empirical psychologists. Um, so it begins, his, his critique is basically that intensive differences cannot be measured because it is important, one cannot identify an integer of measure through which one would quantify differences in sensation. The illusion of intensive magnitude falls from transposing the determinate magnitude of a physical cause into the felt quality. And this is a mistake. This is a paralogism, according to Bergson. Intensities of sensation admit of no units of measure, only qualitative differences. In other words, there are differences. Every difference in sensation is a difference in kind, not a difference of degree. So he, he proceeds to this critique of the psychophysical correlation between difference in extensity and difference in extensity. Because obviously, like, if you can establish a law-like correlation between a kind of a neurophysiological stimulus and a conscious state, or the, 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 the intrinsic characteristics of a conscious state, then a science of consciousness is possible. You can establish law-like correlations between the mental and the physical. Um, and this is what Bergson challenges from the outset in order to defend a, a, a dualism even more radical than, than Descartes. Um, it's not a substance dualism, um, but it's a radical kind of property dualism. Um, and here um, I'm going to the second quote. The second quote is uh, from Time and Free Will, and this is a quote from this opening chapter. From Bergson. Either you keep to what consciousness presents to you, or you have recourse to a conventional mode of representation. So once again, Bergson claims that he is simply describing the phenomena, the data of consciousness, the data of lived experience, without any kind of conceptual transposition or importation. In the first case, you will find a difference between S and S. S and S dash are two sensations. In the first case, you will find a difference between S and S dash, like that between the shades of the rainbow and not at all an interval of magnitude. In the second case, you may introduce the symbol delta S. This is Fechner's symbol in order to attempt to quantify um, a difference in sensation, a degree of difference in sensation. But it is only in a conventional sense that you will speak here of an arithmetical difference and in a conventional sense also that you will assimilate a sensation to a sum. The mistake which Fechner made, as we have just seen, was that he believed in an interval between two successive sensations, S and S dash, when in fact there is simply a passing 
from one to the other, and not a difference in the arithmetical sense of the word. But if the two terms between which the passing takes place could be given simultaneously, there would then be a contrast be besides the transition. And although the contrast is not yet an arithmetical difference, it resembles it in certain respects. For the two terms which are compared stand here side by side, as in a case of, of the subtraction of two numbers. So, Bergson's claim is very simple. His argument is very, very straightforward. It's simply that what is consciousness? Consciousness is sensation. What is sensation? Sensation is intensive difference, intensive differentiation. Um, there are no degrees of intensity or of intensive difference because every difference between two sensations, S and S dash, is a difference in kind. And what Bergson's claim is that the passage from S to S dash is not, um, has been illegitimately conceived in spatial terms. Psychophysicists have spatialized, they've represented this as a, a difference between two kind of, uh, two coinciding or, or kind of spatially distributed um, events or states. And what, what, what resists um, quantifiable measure, according to, to Bergson, is the passing. In other words, what is the experience of consciousness, or, or what is consciousness constituted by? It's the experience of passing, of duration. And duration itself, or the passing from S to S dash, is precisely um, what cannot be quantified or measured. Um, and it can never therefore be correlated with any kind of degree of excitation in the organism that is allegedly having this sensation. Um, so, um, so, no, um, so Bergson's claim then is very simple. It, so he claims then that, um, no, so the, the question is, how is it that we are aware? How do we register these differences of sensation? Now, what's interesting about Bergson's test is that in a way he very ingeniously or what I'm going to suggest he's actually doing, strangely is that Bergson isn't really kind of engaged in a phenomenology. Um, he's not engaged in a phenomenology because he doesn't believe that um, conscious phenomena can be inscribed within a logos. In other words, he doesn't believe that they are, he doesn't, he doesn't hold to the thesis of intentionality. In, in, in kind of, um, you know, Deleuze's famous formulation, for Bergson, consciousness is not of something, it is that something itself. Um, so the question is, you are your experience, or when you have, so the, the question is, what is it that, um, how is, are these, um, in, these qualitative differences in sensation registered? Now, what's, what Bergson actually does is that instead he never actually explains um, how the registration of a qualitative difference in duration could proceed. And he can't because there's no mechanism. There's no possible explanation. You just experience, it's, it's this brute datum as far as he's concerned. The passage from S to S dash and the qualitative difference between, that separates S from S dash cannot be, it's not a measurable interval. In other words, it can, it's not a categorical difference. It's not, it's not even a difference in kind in the familiar conceptual sense. Uh, this is why Bergson's vocabulary of um, differences in kind is, is itself misleading because what Bergson does is he says intellection systematically occludes um, the qualities, the intensities of experience. How does it do so? It carves up the movement, the passage of duration into discrete states with determinate qualities. It, this is what it, 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 it um, uh, segregates, segments, and um, individuates um, passages or transitions which actually cannot be uh, carved up or segregated. Um, this is why, as far as, so in other words, so this is why that the quality of a conscious state is not a determinate quality in the way in which um, a physical object or a physical state of affairs can be characterized in terms of a determinate quality. 
But what Bergson does is having simply having pointed out how these psychophysicists are um, making this fundamental mistake by systematically, by dividing and segregating what is in fact a pure continuity, a kind of a heterogeneous continuity. He doesn't do anything else. He, he never actually gives a positive account of what, of the nature of these causative differences. In other words, he never tells you what kind of differences the, these are. Um, now, so what, what I, I want to suggest is that um, he says that the attempt to represent, um, he says all our, um, our misunderstanding of the intrinsic character of duration comes from intellection. <coughs> Intellection illegitimately kind of superimposes the distinction between states and qualities um, onto the, the flow of duration and makes it seem as if the succession of con conscious states could be understood in spatial terms as a kind of, you know, the, uh, the linear unfolding of um, a physical movement. And this is what Bergson will famously denounce as the uh, kinema kinema kinematographical illusion. Um, but what, so spatialization, so the attempt to characterize, to give a positive characterization of qualities involves spatialization. And spatialization is ruled out of court as an illegitimate, as a misunderstanding of the phenomenon. But what's really striking is that Bergson provides no criteria of adequacy for what a proper interpretation of the phenomenon in question would be. See, see, he's not like a, phenom a phenomenologist who can say, he doesn't, he's not going to be like Heidegger who's going to evoke this pre-ontological understanding of the ways in which phenomena disclose themselves to Dasein. Um, precisely because this, the, the, um, this is a, a, a pre-conceptual, pre-discursive, radically kind of pre-semantic um, experience. So the, difference, the, the, the phenomenon of duration can't be interpreted. It can be interpreted and it is not meaningful in the way in which an intentional phenomenon is for a phenomenologist. The consequence of that is that Bergson provides no criteria by which you could distinguish between a proper characterization of an intensive quality and an improper characterization. And what he actually does is that he superimposes this um, a concept of uh, duration as pure qualitative, pure qualitative heterogeneity onto our experience and says this is what, this is how we ought to describe our experience. Okay, so it's, it's a kind of, um, he's actually introducing, it's a completely conceptual operation, he's transposed a conceptual characterization of the radical kind of non-categorial purity of lived experience for any kind of empirical account or empirical description of what the properties and features of conscious experience would be. Um, so in other words, it's, it's precisely the mixture of space and time, or of extensity and intensity, that Bergson analyzes and decomposes into extensity without quality and intensity without quantity. The fundamental dualism that governs all of Bergson's work intensity and extensity, space and time, uh, is completely conceptual. It's a pure conceptual distinction. Um, he claims to have uh, derived it from this account, from an empirical account, but well, it's not an empirical account at all. He's not describing anything at all. Um, so the Bergson operation is in fact one of abstraction. It's, it's one of conceptual abstractions through and through. He abstracts from the composite nature of experience.